What did the Quran teach us? The Quran teaches us that, that if somebody attacks you, defend yourself. Okay. It's not the hypocrisy of turn the other cheek, yeah. right? People talk about turn the other cheek, but we challenge any pastor to come here and let me slap them. Bam. And let me well, see if they turn the other cheek, monk, right? Let them come. I haven't will. seen it. Oh, yeah, it's just all talk. No, it's hypo let a monk come to here, San Diego, Balboa Park here. Let me slap the daylights out of him and let me see him turn the other cheek. This is a challenge. Uh, what about the, you know, uh, cutting hands in the Quran? What's that all about? So when you talk about cutting hands in Islam, first thing we need to put things in perspective, right? It's not like you just go around the street cutting hands of people and things like this. Um, in Islam, you have penal codes, you have penalties, which are such that they have prevention instead of cure. Right? It's not just about like you do something and then you then you have to go and try to fix it by putting somebody in jail and then taxpayers are paying 70,000 a year to keep somebody in jail. And, and w what do you do with that? Somebody steals and you put them in jail. How does that benefit them or society? It just gets them to network more with criminals, work out, uh, you know, a uh, big joint, a prison gang, stab somebody. How does that make anything better? In Islam, we have the idea that if you prevent the crime, this is better than trying to deal with it afterwards. So when you know as a person that if you steal, you're going to get your hand chopped off, are you going to steal? You're not going to take that chance. So let's say somebody is starving, right? And you need to steal. In Islam, the hand's not cut. If somebody steals a small amount, less than a gold, one fourth of the gold dinar, your hand's not cut. What's if, dinar? Dinar is the Islamic coin, right? It's a pure gold coin. So the price of the pure gold, one fourth of the coin, if it's less than that that's stolen from the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, your hand's not cut. So it's not like people stealing candy or things like this. But if it's grand theft, more than that, than that one fourth of the gold coin, then here it's grand theft. If you are mentally challenged, you're not aqil, your hand's not cut. If you were under the influence of, of yani, insanity or walking, you know, when you're sleepwalking or something like this, your hand's not cut. If you're under age, you're not, pu you haven't hit puberty, you don't know what you're doing, you're a kid, your hand's not cut. All those checks and balances are in place. But if you got no need, you're not starving, you're not in need, you're a grown man, you can make decisions, you have your senses, and you want to go rob people for no reason, then the punishment is such that it should deter you from doing it. And that's why in the countries that enact Islamic law, you don't have a lot of theft. You don't have people robbing. Why? Because they know it's such a thing, they don't want to take that chance. But here in America, we see so much crime. Why? Because people know if I rob you, I get away with it, I get away with it. If I get caught, what's going to happen? I'm going to get locked up, I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to go work out. So what? I'm going to take that chance. And that's why we deal with all the crimes we deal with. You go to some countries that have Islamic law, you can walk around at 2 a.m. with wads of cash, put it down, walk away, come back and it'll be there. Why? Because Allah made such a beautiful law that it keeps things in balance. And you don't have random people or you know people on the street worried about getting robbed. Why? Because of that security that comes. Now, let's be fair about it. Okay? Let's talk. So I talked about the Islamic law, right? How it has checks and balances, how all of that. Let's go to the Bible, right? People talk about laws and, their, and, 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 and whether they're humane or not. Christians tell us, and I'm not judging you here, I'm just saying the question that's come to us is that Jesus is God. And that God sent the rules and regulations of the Old Testament. So according to that logic, Jesus, who according to them is God, or the Son of God, or part of God, or all, I don't know, sent these laws in the Bible. So let's look at the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 11 and 12. Deuteronomy chapters 25, 11 and 12. If two men fight together and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him, and this is, you can read it in the Bible, and seizes him by the genitals, then you shall cut off by her hand by the genitals. Then you should cut off her hand and your eyes shall not pity her. So now people cut talk about, and your eyes so in Islam, if somebody's robbing you, grand theft, like a large amount, without any need, with full senses, then we have such a punishment to deter it. But in the Bible, what do we find if a woman is trying to help her husband out? He's in a fight with somebody, she's trying to help him, and she's trying to grab the other guy to stop him. You cut off her hand, and you can't even pity her. That's in the Bible. So how are you going to be hypocritical as a Christian and talk about cutting hands in Islam, 
When you have that in the Bible. Plus, the pre isn't the president swear upon this book when they... Uh, they do. They do. They do. Presidents, senators, all of them, they swear upon this book. Preachers, pastors come and preach this book. And as I said, even the laws of the Old but Testament... This was here? Has uh, it been enacted here? No, not that I know of, because this is biblical they laws. Swear up on it then? It's a good question. We need to ask those presidents. <laughs> but this is... But this is where we see a hypocrisy of questioning, right? Somebody comes as a Christian and they, they tell us about this Bible. Go ahead. So if the guy saw more than a, the, the amount that you just said, yes. and he said, well, you know what, I want to repent. Sure. What happens? He can repent. He can, repent. He can definitely, he can pay back the amount that he stole. He can repent. The person who, who so was robbed. Go, hey, uh, no, 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 no. There, there is there is an entire court system. It's not like somebody steals you catch them like the movies. You know the the Hollywood. Yeah, of course. So you go to court. You have a qadi. You have a judge. You have witnesses. You have hujja. If you cannot establish the witnesses, he has to be let go, right? And even if he admits, look, I stole, but I'll pay it back, and the guy forgives him. There's no cutting of the hands, right? So let's say you steal from me, and then you say, you know, I'm sorry, and I, I forgive you. There is no case. Right? Everything with mercy and checks and balances. It's not like, like the Holly, Hollywood image of it is like some dude gets caught stealing and then some guy just pulls out a knife right there. This, this isn't reality. This is right, Hollywood. Right, right. This, this is fate, you know?